it looks like um my main man Brendan Shaw has decided to come back out and make another statement or no to make some official statement I guess regarding the whole Joe Rogan controversy with Spotify and him Spotify actually I say Spotify as a um, White House press secretary said so he decided to come out and defend his boy because you know Joe Rogan is essentially the reason why he has the career he has despite him you know not being as a uh, good at doing the job as you think he is but regardless um the defense is an interesting one the things that he says here because it feels like this is more so him trying to pat himself on the back and you know demonstrate how cool and interesting and thoughtful he is as opposed to defending Joe Rogan that's what it feels like again maybe I'm reading too much into it but that's what it feels like to me but this is a clip here of uh, Brendan Shaw talking about the whole thing let's quickly uh get this up on the screen here so you don't see too much of the outside nonsense and let's play it let's go you guys have no clue you have no clue I don't fuck with bad people I don't have any person in my life in my circle that is a bad person zero but if you read headlines about certain friends that I have you probably think I do associate with that I don't that's a weird thing to say though isn't it like how can you categorically say everyone that hangs you hang around with isn't a bad person you don't see them every single day you don't see it them every single hour of the day you don't know what they get up to in their own free time when that whole Chris Aaliyah thing went down he was like I can't talk and started crying on his show why was that was it because it felt like the crying was genuine some of it was maybe performative maybe some of it was guilt because maybe you're thinking oh shit they're gonna come after me next but it generally felt like somebody that was clearly surprised that their friend that they kind of held up to a level of esteem somebody they kind of looked up to was doing things that they could never believe that they would do it, it didn't cross their mind even that this guy that is clearly somebody as a bit of a ladies man da, 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 would ever be in a position where he was being accused of you know maybe trying to diddle kids that was clearly what those tears were so to sit there and say everybody i hang around with is a cool guy to hang around with bad people that's nonsense absolute nonsense and again forget the delia allegations the, the brian callen ones also were like they were crazy bro it wasn't like people were coming out and saying just some any nonsense there were fairly detailed accounts of him essentially our wording people and it's like yo like still we didn't get an explanation as to why those allegations are out there no kind of counter narrative there was no like again it's not their it's not their business to do so and you know who do they owe an explanation but there was no real kind of grown-up conversation about the you know the role that they play in interactions with women in night i don't know just some some something introspective about how to conduct yourself as a man in the comedy scene maybe getting a woman on to basically share her experiences of coming up in the scene and what men can do better there was no growing or kind of evolving or listening in that whole entire thing again listening i know it's a proper cringe where people will say on social media i want to listen on but there's none of that they just kind of weathered the storm and just continued keeping on as keeping on of course sans the joe rogan sort of like stamp but essentially they just kept it on kept going on as as, as per normal nothing really changed apart from you know crystal and, and brian callum being basically um uh excommunicated from the joe rogan universe but to suggest that you know everybody in your social group how they are privately is just wild to say what a crazy justification if any of my friends were actually what the internet or social media thinks of if they were actually that person they dude i would fucking cancel them so goddamn fast and the other point is all that's interesting about if my friends will like what the internet is this is kind of like a veiled i guess pushback against some of his trolls and detracts and people that don't like him but is him is, are people like him not aware that most of the people on the internet that speak about this sort of stuff are made up of fans as well why do they think there's a a huge silent majority of people that aren't on the internet the majority of people that are causing or driving a conversation are made up of fans and people that don't like you but they're clearly a, a group of fans also that are concerned again I, I again as a black dude i don't care what joe rogan said i really don't care it really doesn't bother me one bit if anything like i mentioned before the planet of the ape story is probably more offensive but still i don't care it's not like i'm gonna stop listening to the podcast but the lack of kind of understanding why some people will be pissed off about it is weird to me like they're kind of making it seem as if he like had the bad the wrong opinion around regarding trans athletes or something right that's what it feels like whereas it's like no he said 
a word that a lot of black people in north from a lot of african-american people feel like white people shouldn't say <clears throat> he clearly was saying it to be edgy trying saying it to be controversial and push but lines and push buttons and shit you know somebody resurfaced that compilation that came out a couple of years ago ironically enough i think if i'm not mistaken alex jones actually was the one that maybe not commissioned it but is the one that put, you know pop popularize that clip because remember when he was going through that little beef with rogan and he started talking about joe rogan's stepdaughter and shit like being mad disrespectful <clears throat> which again shows how much of a cool guy joe rogan is because he forgave him pretty quickly and didn't really mention any of the stuff that he was doing underhand but if i'm not mistaken this clip is definitely from that period of when alex jones was going after rogan <clears throat> so my life's not even funny i fuck with no bad people only good people hashtag only good people in my life out of all my people in my life there is not a better person on this earth than joe rogan no one has done for more for my career than joe rogan well duh that's the whole reason why they're saying that and again it's not like a look how serious he's he's more well spoken and more articulate and more sort of calm and reasonable in his kind of a, even i don't agree with anything he's saying then he was when he was defending himself against Ariel Hawani. Isn't that weird? Like he actually is speaking far better now here than he was about. And this is obviously because this is miss. This is the guy that legitimately made him. He obviously broke him in terms of that, you know, um, you'd be surprised conversation, but it felt like to me again, from an outsider being a fan of Rogan, it felt like to me, he kind of regretted what he did when he gave, Ro gave Brendan that dressing down and basically told him, retire, you're not good enough. He, f he regretted doing it the way he did it. Obviously it was harsh and it was clearly maybe a bit unwarranted, but it got the message across, but he's regretted it after the fact. And I feel like, again, this is just my interpretation. I don't know these people at all, but I feel like after the fact, Rogan made it his mission to basically help help Brendan out as much as possible to make sure that he landed on his feet and he had a career outside of the UFC so he didn't be that so you know you know the worst thing that can happen is like someone listens to your advice and then it goes horribly wrong you don't want to be responsible for that having any conscience is going to be awful and of course the best way to get him back on his feet and allow him to do the thing that he wants to do was to have him hang around with everybody at the comedy store go on his show a million times I think there was one year where he was basically the most had the most appearances on the Jurgen podcast so it makes no sense considering you know how little insight you actually get from him but still there was clearly a push to basically you know get him on that show as much as possible get people to know his personality maybe get to like him more and he can make a career out of it so it's no surprise that he's coming out and really defending Joe super hard but this defense is weird. Now, see, that's the thing, right? Oh, the only reason you're anywhere is because of Joe. Sure. Again, you know how many people Joe has helped out and they didn't have my career or they didn't use the opportunity and carry carry it? <laughs> he couldn't help himself, could he? He couldn't help himself, could he? In that instance, again, in that instance, oh my God, that terrible tattoo of his kids as zombies. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, that's an opportunity to be quite soft deprecating right like i know a lot of you guys uh there's that common that's a common adage yeah i'm only here because of rogan no you're right i am only here because of rogan rogan played an instrumental part of my career without him i don't know where i'd be i'd probably be holding mitts somewhere in the flipping globo gym that's the fact of the matter and because of that i'm going to defend him to the hilt because i know this man i know him personally i know his family you know what i mean like I've, i spent a lot of time around this guy and that he's many things but he's not a racist he might have said something stupid. I don't condone what he said, but clearly he's not a racist. And this attack that's going on him is completely unfair, unwarranted. And whatever I can do to help and assist, I will. I don't know, something like that. But instead, it's like, do you know how many people that got that chance that didn't be me, that aren't as amazing as I am, that don't have a Ferrari, <laughs> that don't have a mansion? That's what he's basically doing. He's just doing that instead of just being self-deprecating and trying to have some level of humility in the situation. No, Rogan's getting flipping you know bullets from every direction it feels like people are legitimately trying to catch which is not going to work really because what's canceling rogan he gets paid out of his contract and you know has to cry into his you know flipping duvets full of cash oh no right but still this is you know he's really under the cost here and this is the moment where you feel like to remind people actually i'm one of his more successful ones that's been on there look at the other people that have been on there they're not that successful as i am it's like jesus man the hubris on this man and turn into something great more more and of course a whiskey at what time in the morning is that like does he film this show before 12 so he's liquored up and ready to roll which is actually good because 
he actually sounds more coherent than he's ever sounded in a while. So maybe it's not the whiskey that makes him sound incoherent. He just doesn't concentrate or think about what he's saying most of the time. And today, because it's Daddy Rogan, he's really focusing on what he has to say. Or than other people that came successful. So that doesn't bother me. But if I list off the names, black, white, Asian, female, whatever it is, he doesn't, there can be a less, less racist person. Less, less, the pronunciation. Why is he holding his heart like that? He's my friend, don't kill him, please. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, these people are so pathetic, man. I really don't understand any of this stuff. I really don't get it. I really don't get it, man. They're acting as if he died, like, he says some naughty words. He's getting slaps on the wrist about it. And the interesting thing about it too, again, being a Joe Rogan fan in general, is how ill, I think Rogan's done all right. I don't think his apology has been that bad, really. It's just how ill-prepared everyone else surrounding him is in terms of dealing with a bit of pushback from the things that they say and attempted cancellation here and there. Like they don't seem to be able to handle it well. They're all kind of shaking in their boots. They're all trying to fall over themselves to show how much of a friend they are to him and prove their loyalty and he did this to me and we are standing up to the cancel mob it's like bro you guys spent all your podcast talking about cancel culture talking about um culture wars and trans athletes and trans bathrooms and lgbtq this and ranting and raving about nonsense that has nothing to do with you clearly no one in your life is even you know from those walks of life and here you are talking incessantly about things that you have no idea about and then it kindly comes to your doorstep in terms of the cancellation things and whatnot and even though you have all these stories that you speak about you know from other people going through the same thing like the woman in central park and um the netflix executive has said the n-word in the boardroom like all these instances that everyone's kind of heard of over the years yet they haven't learned anything from it you know the jeffrey tubin thing jerking on camera loads of things have happened in the last few years that you would assume people who talk about this counterculture stuff incessantly would have taken some notes on them like okay what works what doesn't work as in terms of approach how you should talk about it how your friends should communicate about it but i don't know something it's just it just feels weird man they're like they're all very ill prepared and but again maybe because it's the rogan effect because legitimately without rogan so many people wouldn't have a career so they're all kind of panicking because they don't want to lose him because if they do you know what they're gonna do so I mean, legitimately some of them are struggling because he just moved to texas imagine if he's not allowed to make any media anymore do they you know what's that what's that adage did a tree fall if no one sees it like if jogans doesn't exist do all these comedians have careers i don't know but anyway here's another clip i'll play it and i'll end on this one that's not the way comedy works that's not the way sports works that's the way hollywood works and how's that going for you? Lame. I noticed it straight away. You see how he's copying the flipping Ariel Hawani um, mannerisms and cadence and way of speaking. Do you remember Ariel, when Ariel Hawani lit him up? Do you remember that time? It seems like he's doing the same thing. So he clearly watched that video and he's taking notes. <laughs> Look, you can't blame the guy because that was a pretty effective way to kind of get at somebody, right? Um, Open-ended questions um presumptions insinuations uh, a little bit of snark a little bit of snide that's a great way to go against someone like this and it's working for him because he clearly sounds way better now than he ever has especially when he was doing his defense he's swallowing all the time he sounds much better here he doesn't sound as angry or furious he just sounds like he's got the courage of his convictions like he really believes what he's saying again like i said how funny is it he's got more conviction trying to defend a fully grown man who's nearly what 50 or something plus years old then he has defending his own self because you know clearly what Ariwani said about him was probably had more truth to it and was probably closer to home than what's happening to rogan i don't know it's just interesting how's it going for you guys we have the power now and when the talent realizes we have the power you guys are fucked mm, the fans have the power really in it if people don't buy your thick boy merch or your whiskey where's that at? we don't know or go to your live shows you don't have a career you know what i mean people need to watch your videos people need to go and buy tickets to your shows you know go to your tough mothers that's the only way you have a career so to say that we have the power as if like 
they just walk around and wherever they go people follow them it's, mm, that's not the case mate like it really isn't and also maybe to a certain segment of that crowd not all of them have that power to just walk anywhere and people will follow maybe you know again your mum's house people you know people that follow tiger belly you know i could see them following them i could see their fans following them wherever they want to go but i don't think the fire and the kid have enough juice in them if they went and just up sticks and went to another platform that everybody that was on those other platforms would follow i don't think that would be the case in my opinion but again straight up we don't need anybody we need nobody you guys need us but you're gonna have your puppets that play the game and have to play the game that'd be around for a little bit but we're moving the marker and it starts with joe rogan wow. and we're moving the marker with the guy who's smarter more talented more kind, not racist, and richer than you. Oh yeah, always money, always money. The talent, like again, I love Joe. He really is a thought leader. He inspired me to make my own podcast. I take, you know, I've done jujitsu and mixed martial arts and Muay Thai because of him, because of instruction of he gave me to UFC and MMA. Cool. You know, I, I got into no, even started no. I didn't get signed because of him. I watched flipping Eddie Murphy Raw. That was my first stand up special. But yeah, still influential dude but talented in what way he's made a really successful show one not repeated in any other realm is on it really i don't know like let's relax in it let's relax he does one thing really well the other stuff the mma commentary a lot of people who are more educated than me on that bit say he's not the best let's relax let's relax i mean let's let's just relax and the rich thing of course the rich thing with, with with brendan unless you're not richer than him anything you say in terms of criticisms or pushback doesn't matter i mean doesn't matter you have to be richer god forbid god forbid how he would have replied if ariel was actually rich, poorer than him by a considerable distance like if he didn't have all those deals and he was just a youtube guy you would have seen a real rude side of brendan i guarantee you that but because he's you know he's been paid a decent wage for he's in majority of his life he's had a few deals ariel he couldn't do the whole like you're poor you're no one you're a loser sort of thing he already like what you call it you know insinuating he didn't respect him because he looked like a dork so imagine what he would have said if he knew he was poorer i'll bank on that guy while the rest of you sit behind your keyboard and your boardrooms and criticize because you know what we're not going to do is go, well, look at what Howard Stern said. Look what The Rock said, because that's not moving the needle. All that does is cancel those guys. We need those guys. I think Rock's a fantastic person. I think the message and the hope that he gives people is fantastic. I root for that. Me no, you don't. Doesn't he always insinuate that he takes roids and he kind of scoffs at his success and says loads of disparaging words about The Rock? He's not a fan of him. He's, he, to me, he comes across as a bit jealous of The Rock because he's basically everything that he's not in terms of how well loved he is and regarded and stuff like he doesn't have good words to say about the rock this is lies meathead i'm a meathead i think joe rogan has changed the narrative on meatheads but you guys must say oh, the what what's that word but you guys must say oh he's just this meathead is he von meatheads I think joe rogan has changed the narrative on meathead I think joe rogan has changed the narrative on meat think joe rogan has changed the narrative on meat it's like he's always got his mouth full of marbles isn't it just and again, I do it myself. I stutter sometimes. I rush through words. I speak really fast. But Jesus, no, what's that? Joe Rogan has changed the narrative on meatheads. But you guys must say, oh, he's just this meathead. Is he? Yeah, he works out, man. Yeah, he has a lot of muscle. I hate to tell you, he's smarter than you. He's more open-minded than you. Must. He's changing the world for the better. Silence him makes this worse. If you have kids, and I have two, I have a five and two-year-old. Do you want to come up in a world where the voices that are different than your mainstream media get silenced because they don't have an agenda and can't sell your fucking ah shut the fuck up man anyway it's bullshit in it these guys are fucking pathetic man it, it's like everything in life in it the, the, the annoying thing isn't the thing it's always the fans of the thing right like crossfit crossfit isn't annoying it's the flipping people that do crossfit that are annoying they can't shut the fuck up about it like beer is nice craft beer is lovely there's nothing worse than a flipping craft beer enthusiast that's trying to tell you about the hops and the this and the that go and spin on something you absolute wallet and there's nothing wrong with rogan it's all the flipping acolytes around him the the, the nut huggers the cock holsters who take it upon themselves to be his flipping you know his protector and shield when really and truly if you feel like if people were a bit more honest and 
you know, he had that kind of normal relationship with people because it, it must be hard. Again, it's Rogan too. I remember he said it once on one show that everyone is everyone that comes interaction with him is. Not, I think Ari said it to me. Ari Shafir. He was like, oh yeah, everyone I speak to is nice. It's like, yeah. He's like, yeah, of course they're gonna be nice. You're Joe fucking Rogan. And he's clearly doesn't really, you know, that's what makes Joe Rogan cool because he doesn't really think of himself like that. But he would probably benefit a lot from having, I won't say normal, but having like people around him that aren't all just flipping, you know, comedians that want to make a come up because it feels like these people, man, are just incapable of having a, <laughs> I'd have to say they're incapable of having a normal relationship with him that doesn't involve having to suck him off every time. Let's just whether it's the comments on his Instagram posts or when he posts stuff like, you know, another another flipping cutting board with meats on it. Like, people are whacking themselves off. Oh, you cook meat, you barbecue. It's like, look, I'm a fan of the guy. I've listened to the podcast since the high 300s. I'm a big, big fan of the show. Like I said, like, he introduced, like, I started podcasting because of him, MMA training because of him. But honestly, man, the, oh, yeah, yeah, the fans and the, what, what are these supporters and protectors? It's like, get a life man grown adults kind of like he, he'll be fine Joe Rogan's gonna be fine even if they do boot him off Spotify what's the worst that can happen he gets paid out of his contract he goes somewhere else he sets up another flipping platform you know, that's an actual platform that doesn't you know turn into a publisher down the line because they don't like what you say he'll be fine let's relax god almighty anyway 